SpaceX successfully launched its first Falcon 9 rocket of the year Thursday, January 6th, sending a new stack of Starlink satellites into orbit from Florida before nailing a landing at sea. In a change from previous Starlink missions, the Falcon 9 rocket will fly southeast from the coast of Florida on a course just north of the Bahamas to place a new batch of internet satellites into low Earth orbit a few hundred miles above Earth. Today, we will tell you everything about the Falcon 9's first stage has landed on the A Shortfall of Gravitas drone ship. Number 5. SpaceX adds another 49 Starlinks. January 6th saw Elon Musk's SpaceX launch an extra 49 satellites into his broadband fleet and the first launch of 2022 for the business. The launch from the Kennedy Space Center at 16.49 p.m. Eastern Time went flawlessly, as did the landing of the rocket's booster some nine minutes after launch. Falcon 9's first stage booster supporting this mission previously launched a couple of SatNav craft GPS-34, GPS-35, and the Humanitarian Inspiration-4 mission. Following stage separation, Falcon 9's first stage will land on the A Shortfall of Gravitas drone ship, which was stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. This was the 35th Starlink launch since 2019 and takes the total satellites orbited to more than 2,000. Last year, SpaceX set a new record for any rocket launch business, having sent a total of 31 launches into space in a single year. Its next launch is on January 24th for an Italian reconnaissance satellite. Number 4. A Shortfall of Gravitas Approximately nine minutes after liftoff, the rocket's first stage returned to Earth and touched down on the deck of SpaceX's newest drone ship, A Shortfall of Gravitas, marking the company's first successful launch and landing of the new year. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Launch Complex 39 at Kennedy Space Center, carrying our stack of 49 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. SpaceX engineer Jesse Anderson said during the launch broadcast. Weather forecasters at the 45th Space Delta predicted ideal weather conditions for liftoff, and Mother Nature did not disappoint. It was a crystal clear day here in Florida, and the rocket could be seen throughout its climb through the atmosphere, disappearing from sight when the first stage separated and began the trek back to Earth. SpaceX confirmed the successful deployment of the 49 Starlink satellites via Twitter about one hour, 20 minutes after liftoff. This liftoff kicks off another action-packed year for the California-based aerospace company. A shortfall of Gravitas is a notable upgrade over previous ships. SpaceX explained during the mission launch livestream that it improves over its predecessors with a fully autonomous operation procedure. This means it can travel to sea, find its position, receive the rocket, grab the rocket with its Octograbber robot, and return it to land, all autonomously. Previous ships required a tugboat to pull the ship out to the correct location. SpaceX used the tugboat for the new ship's first outing, with full autonomy planned later. The Falcon 9 lifted off from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida at 3.14 a.m. Eastern Time. The rocket launched a Dragon capsule containing over 4,800 pounds of crew supplies and scientific research supplies. The booster successfully landed on the new ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean just over seven minutes after liftoff. Musk's image, which shows the ship and booster on the sunlit water, was previously shared by SpaceX three days after the mission on September 1st. In 2021, SpaceX set a new record for most launches in a single year at 31. The company also launched a total of 12 astronauts on three Crew Dragon missions, including four private citizens who flew as part of the Inspiration4 mission. SpaceX will try to keep up its rapid launch cadence this year as the company continues to expand its ever-growing internet constellation. Also on deck this month is the company's third dedicated rideshare mission, which is devoted to launching a multitude of small satellites in orbit. Following that launch on January 13th, the company will also send a radar reconnaissance satellite into space for the Italian Space Agency. 
called Cosmo SkyMed Second Generation, or CSG2, the satellite is scheduled to launch on January 24th. Number 3. SpaceX's Third Autonomous Drone Ship It's SpaceX's third autonomous drone ship currently in operation. Just read the instructions. This ship, which entered use in 2016, supported launches from the Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, operating off the west coast of the United States. It moved to Florida in 2019. Of course I still love you. This ship first entered use in 2015, initially supporting launches from Florida by operating off the east coast of the United States. In June 2021, just before a shortfall of Gravitas entered service, Of Course I Still Love You moved to the West Coast. The three ships are named after ships in sci-fi writer Ian M. Banks' culture series of novels. In February 2018, Musk told Florida Today that SpaceX will use the third ship to support more frequent flights from Florida. With its successful mission last month, the new ship has become the first to complete its first attempted landing. But while it may prove useful for SpaceX's short-term plans, Musk has different goals in mind for the longer term. The underdevelopment Starship rocket, designed to take over Falcon 9 operations, may return to Earth with a giant grabbing arm dubbed the Mechazilla. If successful, it would represent another major breakthrough for the spacefaring firm. Number 2. The Constellation Grows Thursday's flight continues SpaceX's efforts to expand and upgrade its burgeoning Starlink Internet constellation, marking the 35th dedicated Starlink launch since 2019. This launch brings the total number of the flat-paneled Starlink satellites up to almost 2,000. It also continues the company's efforts to launch newly upgraded satellites. In an effort to enable the satellites to communicate with each other, the company equipped them with special laser links. This way, the satellites can communicate more effectively, without having to rely on ground relays. This launch will also feature a slightly different trajectory than normal, with the rocket flying southeast from the coast of Florida as opposed to the typical northeast path that recent missions have taken. As such, it will have to fly just north of the Bahamas to avoid flying over any populated areas. That's because SpaceX is targeting a parking spot a few hundred miles above the Earth, at an inclination of 53.2 degrees, one of five orbital shells that the company is working to fill with roughly 4,400 satellites. These shells will be located at various altitudes above the planet between 335 and 348 miles, or 540 and 560 kilometers, and at orbital inclinations of 53, 53.2, 70, and 97.6 degrees. The inclination is the angle between the orbital plane and the equator. So far, SpaceX has filled the 53-degree shell and is working on the rest. Thursday's launch will fill another spot on the 53.2-degree orbit but will take a slightly different route to get there. Starlink's overarching goal is to connect people around the globe, particularly those in rural and remote areas who have little to no connectivity. To date, the service is fully operational and available in 20 countries, and that number keeps rising. With more than 100,000 subscribers, company officials have said that the program is continuously growing. Number 1. Falcon's fourth flight. In 2015, SpaceX changed the rocket game by recovering its first first stage booster. That success was thanks to a series of upgrades the company provided to its workhorse Falcon 9. Featuring a more robust thermal protection system, titanium grid fins, and a more durable inner stage, the part that connects the rocket's two stages, the souped-up Falcon 9 rocket we see today is capable of flying many times over. As such, the company heavily relies on a fleet of used rockets to deliver its many payloads into space. This mission is no different. Dubbed B-1062, the rocket featured in Thursday's flight now has five successful missions under its belt. It first debuted in November 2020, when it carried an upgraded GPS-3 satellite into space for the U.S. Space Force. 
That mission marked the second time that SpaceX was allowed to recover a booster after launching a payload for the U.S. government. The previous GPS-3 launch, which occurred in June 2020, marked the first ever recovery as part of a government mission. It would go on to also become the first to fly a second government payload as just seven months later, the rocket carried its second GPS-3 satellite into orbit. Following that successful liftoff, the rocket launched SpaceX's first private astronaut mission, Inspiration4. The flight was part of a massive fundraising effort for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. As part of that historic mission, four private citizens, Jared Isaacman, Haley Arsenault, Sean Proctor, and Chris Sembrowski, boarded a Crew Dragon spacecraft and spent three days orbiting the Earth. For its fourth act, the same booster ferried a stack of SpaceX's own internet satellites into orbit before returning to Earth and landing on a floating platform at sea Thursday evening. A shortfall of Gravitas is SpaceX's newest drone ship. The highly anticipated ship was added to SpaceX's fleet in 2021, bringing the total number of drone ships up to three. These massive ships are crucial components in SpaceX's grand scheme of reusability and ultimately enable them to fly more rockets. Prior to its arrival in Port Canaveral, the company's most prolific ship, Of Course I Still Love You, switched coasts, traveling to California so that rockets launching from SpaceX's West Coast facilities would have more options for landing. There are two ways SpaceX recovers rockets by landing them on a floating platform at sea, or by returning to land and touching down on a designated landing pad. Landings on terra firma require more fuel, so SpaceX typically opts to land its rockets on the drone ships, ensuring more successful recoveries, as not every mission has the excess fuel needed to return to land. Do share with us in the comments what else you guys know about the SpaceX mission. Thanks for watching.